Well, as you can see, it's all finished. I uh, made my little signs, which fill up this area in here. And I went and put some scenic material around the base of the uh, old dead tree sticking up here. You can see my signs here. It says, no trespassing. Violators will be shot. Survivals, survivors will be shot again. And go back, your GPS is wrong. That just adds a little more humor to it. Kind of ties it into this. Now, the, the title of this thing is going to be Slim Pickens. I was at wood carving the other day, and, and uh, one of the fellows there, we were talking about this because I took it down there to show them. And uh, one of them said that, oh, I remember seeing somewhere, and then he told me this saying about these vultures. Not these vultures, but some other vultures. And the saying was really clever. So I said, I'm going to write that in down and use it. And I'm going to. They're probably pretty quick because it was pretty, pretty crafty. So anyway, what I thought I'd do today is show you how I did this, what I went through to do this, and then I'll show you how to make a good looking sign. Now signs, one of the things that uh, I look for in a wood carving is everything should be done by hand. When you start throwing things in there, especially on sign work, uh, you know, where you print it out on a computer or clip it out from a newspaper or magazine or something and glue it on a piece of board and then stick it on your thing to where it's, you know, commercial print. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't tie in with your carving or your scene. You want everything to look hand done. People point to these signs when they see them on my carvings and they say, did you do that? And I'll say, yes, I did. Well, that's just another plus factor in your favor when you're uh, trying to, you know, show what you can do and also when you're trying to sell your work. Believe me, you might not think it's important, but it is. People look for things like that. So anyway, he's all finished. It turned out terrific. I got my birds glued down. And uh, now I can set him aside and go find something else to do. But before I do that, I want to show you first how I go about putting this scenic material around the base of this pole. Okay, what I use, you can find this down at the hobby shop. It's made by Woodland Scenics. It's for model railroading. And this is crushed foam, and it comes in all different colors. So you can see here, this is a real dark green, almost brown. Here's one that's, uh, well, that's the same color, but you can see it a little better, the color there. I don't know when I bought this, but it was $2.20 for that package, and it's lasted me for God knows how many years. Here's some here that's a, a lighter yellow color. Now, that's what I use on the pole there, because uh, I wanted to indicate that it was, you know, not really healthy foliage, but probably dead foliage that died a long time ago. Here's some more lighter green, and here's some pretty dark stuff. So anyway, you can, like I say, you can find this, I don't know, you might be able to find it at Hobby Lobby, but I know a hobby shop that sells model trainings will have this stuff. Or you can go to Wooden Scenic's website and order it from there. It comes in hand. So here's what I do. First I pick my color, which in that case was, I'm going to use some of this dark stuff, because I got lots of it. Get you a little mixing some place to mix it. You'll need your soapy matte medium. Again, this is just uh, this stuff in here with water and a couple drops of uh, water to make it run. It's so yeah. Flow out. A couple of drops of soap. A couple drops of soap. Just soap. What these guys in Hollywood have to put up with their cinematographer telling them what to do when they're trying to act in Anyway, pour you out some uh, some of this Mod Podge. Whoa! What happened there? And I'm going to put a couple drops of this in here. Just for fun. Stir that up. And I'm going to get me some of this stuff. And I'm going to open this 
sides. Just get your couple pinches. You don't need a bunch, see, just a pinch. And put it in there, like that. And then stir this all around to get that stuff really good and soaked. Got a little too much Mod Podge in there. That's okay for demonstration purposes. Then it's just a matter of picking it up, moving it over to your base, and modeling it around the base of your pole. Just takes a little bit of work. And just like that. And if you want to, like I say, I got a little bit too much of the glue in there with that foam. You don't really need that much. After you're done, just kind of take this soapy medium and kind of pour on there like that. take much. And what this soapy medium will do, like I said, because it has a little bit of soap in it, it's going to make everything flow out. Alright? And if you get puddles like that, find a paper towel and uh, just get a corner of the paper towel. I'll show you here in just a second. Just get a corner of the paper towel and set it there and soak that stuff up. But the reason I put, put that soapy medium on there was to make sure that what I put on there adheres down to the base of whatever it's being put on. Okay? And like I say, once it sets up, it sets up hard and it's not going to come off of there unless someone comes along and tries to pull it off of there, but they're not going to do that. The person who buys your work is going to be proud of it and they're going to take care of it, so you don't have to worry about that. So anyway, now what I thought I'd do next is show you how I go about making these signs, just to show you how easy it is, okay? It's not hard to do, but it sure makes it look better on your carvings than sticking some piece of something that uh, you did, got off the computer or out of the magazine or wherever. Okay? Okay. I forgot to tell you, these little things here, these mixing cups and things, I get them uh, at fast food places. You know, you go over there and you'll find a ketchup dispenser and squirt your little ketchup for your french fries. I always cob on to about, you know, two or three extras. I go and that way I have nice little plastic mixing cups that really come in handy for the things that I do around here. All right, to make a sign, now this, this is a piece of basswood. Now you can find this, it comes in several thicknesses, down at Hobby Lobby. I know that's where I bought this, but uh, if you don't have a Hobby Lobby close to you, you can usually find it at a hobby shop. They'll have it for model airplanes and things like that. And this is perfect for uh, making signs. Now, what I generally do when I'm make, making a sign is I'll, oh, whoa, watch it. I'll uh, use my fishtail gouge, and I'll just go over the surface of the sign like this to get rid of that factory finish. Again, just like factory lettering, you want it to look handmade, and this will this will let you do that. Watch which grain, which way the grain goes. This is just a squirrely piece of wood, so it's got grain running two different directions. But anyway, that's what you do, and as you can see, don't look at that. As you can see, it, it just busts up the surface of the wood and just makes it look that much more hand done, okay? Alright, now I didn't do it on this piece because I'm going to demonstrate the next steps. Okay, so 
to make the sign, what I do is uh, just again bust up the edges to make them uneven like that. given the illusion that they're made out of boards. way or you can actually make it appear like it's made out of the board and then after that I use my burning pin just to add a little highlight between those breaks just something See, something like that. Okay, now that looks like a old sign. You don't want to do it in here because this is where you're going to do your letter. All right. And then after that, take it over to the flap sander, sand it, get rid of all this fuzz and stuff off the edges, and spray it or paint it if you want to paint it. Go ahead and paint it, and then spray it with uh, deck or you know varnish it with poly or whatever because you want that wood sealed. You don't want to do your lettering on a piece of wood that hasn't been sealed, because if you do, it's going to bleed all over the place, and we don't want that. So now we'll go over to the paint table, and I'll show you how to do the lettering. <laughs> 